I'm Joelle Kamashigawa. Today we're going to be doing kind of a tomboyish sweet haircut on Georgie. Um, this haircut is actually really fun to do and, and go through because you kind of do a lot of walking around with your sections. Um, I'm going to be starting by sectioning off her fringe area and then I'm going to go in and start on the sides in the front and work my way around towards the back. When sectioning off the fringe area, it's really important to keep in mind the rounds of the head. Um, when, you're, when I'm talking about the rounds of the head, I usually like to use my comb to kind of see where the flattest point of the head is and where the crown, crown meets the top of the apex of the head into the frontal bone here. So I like to see where that curve downward is and use that as kind of the, the peak of my sectioning for the fringe. For the fringe section on this one, I'm taking a slightly larger than normal fringe section. I want her texture, which is a nice beautiful wave, to have a few extra long pieces in the front and later, so I'm leaving those out for now to allow for some future wispy pieces around the face. Now that I have the fringe sorted out of the way, I'm going to be taking some diagonal back sections. These sections will start, will start off here and then will carry all the way through into the back of the cut. So when starting this section, I like to think about the flow of the shape and where we're headed towards. And so for this instance, I'm going to be keeping the elevation slightly high for my graduation. Um, and then I want the shape to flow and have a, a little bit of a weight line that carries right through the occipital bone. So I'm just keeping that in mind as I'm building the weight, the weight point here and how that's going to flow around towards the back. This section is, has a slight forward over direction. With this section, we're gonna have a we're gonna be bringing it back onto our previous section where our guide is, and then keeping the elevation high. But then, as we go and we tuck around into the nape of the neck, we're gonna be dropping that elevation a little bit and taking taking our fingers quite in tight towards the nape there. This is gonna help to tighten this area, but maintain our weight through the center here. Using the ear and the mastoid bone as our guide is when I know that we're going to start tucking in our fingers and going tighter with the shape. And as you're working this shape, it's important to keep moving around with, standing slightly in front of your section, but then moving around 
with it, not to create too much overdirection. So I'm going to continue working these sections in the same manner, following the diagonal back sectioning. And I'm going to work pretty much all the way until her parting and the crown meet. And that's going to wrap all the way through the back here. And while I'm keeping, every, keeping in mind, while I'm working on that, keeping my elevation slightly higher through the front to keep that looseness, and then tucking my fingers as I go around, and keeping also in mind the weight line that I'm creating through the occipital bone that carries through to the front. And with each section, I'm working onto the previous section, not onto the very first section we cut down here, but onto the section prior. And as you can see here, we're starting to now see that buildup of weight and how it's starting to carry through and then leans out into the nape here. And with, with a wavy texture like this, the beautiful thing about it is you can start to see that right away as well as all the just fun flips and kicks of her natural texture. And it really enhances that. We're approaching close to our last two sections on this side, and, and now we're starting to see that buildup of weight through here. Still walking with our sections, our sections have become a slightly more vertical diagonal as we've gone along just to help maintain a little bit of that flow through the shape. Dropping that elevation a little bit as we move around our weight line near the occipital bone. And still, tucking our fingers in as we angle towards the nape of the neck. And as you can start to see here, we have a beautiful natural push from short to long, pushing the hair off of her face and creating a nice little bit of weight through here. I'm going to do one more section now that we're right at her hair parting. It carries right across 
the back of the head. And as you can see with our section, she has a slightly side parting. We started on the small side of her head and this, our section is gonna carry all the way through right to the base of the nape, right at the mastoid bone. Whenever I'm working on this side of the head during graduation, I have my, my fingers pointed downward and I want to keep my elbow in line with my hand because that helps control my hand position as well as my elevation. So we've just finished our last section on this side of the head. We're, I'm just going through and checking that the graduation and the weight point is sitting where I like it. I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So now that we're crossing around towards the back, I'm still keeping in mind um, our elevation as we were talking about previously. Um, and so this time our elbow is down. So it, we wanna keep, keep in mind our higher elevation here and then dipping down into the nape. But this time, instead of our fingers pointed down, our knuckles are tucking into the head. And since we've already cut this previous side, um, as we're coming through now with our sections, still carry your sections through at a diagonal, but we're gonna be crossing into the previously cut areas. This gives us the opportunity to do a little bit of cross-checking ourselves as we go just making sure that everything is flowing as seamlessly as possible. Now we're coming towards our last section, and I like to check, um, before I cut this, I like to check how the crown falls, if there's any calyx, any whorls, anything happening there before I cut it. Sometimes if someone has a really strong calyx here, you want to allow for the hair to bounce a little bit prior to cutting. In Georgie's case, there's really just a small bounce, so not too much to worry about, and I think that'll add to the quirk of the haircut. Now that the main shape has been cut, what I'm gonna do is go through, cross check the back in both directions, just to make sure that we've gotten, we've gotten everything. And then also as well, we've built up a little tiny bit of a corner here. I'm gonna go through and nip that right off.
So now that we've cut the rest of the shape, we're gonna go ahead and cut the fringe. In Georgie's instance, we're gonna take this right around the eyebrow area here. I wanna keep it PC and textured, so I'm not gonna keep my elevation very low for this. Instead, I'm gonna raise my elevation as I cut the sections just to slightly soften the edge. With Georgie's texture being wavy, I wanna keep in mind that her hair will bounce a little bit. So keeping in mind our final length kind of falling around the eyebrow area, I'm gonna cut a little past it to allow for that spring. With some wavy textures or curly textures, you might want to do this, section, this first initial section a few times just to give it a little bit of extra room. By taking our sections straight out from the head, that's gonna allow the corners to be very subtly longer due to the natural curvature of the head. For this last section, I'm going to just slightly lower my elevation just so that we don't get too much bounce right here in the front. And so with curly textures, at, one, at this stage, I like to just go through and see if there's anything that sticks out that I want to adjust. With this particular shape, I'm liking the weight that's flowing through here, but with her curly texture, she does have a slightly higher density right in these sections. So I'm going to just go through and just ever so slightly create a little bit of disconnection here. What I'm going to do just to remove this like touch of extra density weight here, instead of going through and pointing or excessive slide cutting, I'm gonna use my technique. I'm gonna just do a very small layer right in this section. The sectioning is very small. It's really just a small sliver here, just to pick up where that extra density is. Just a small, slightly triangular section. This will be disconnected from the rest of the haircut. Just lifting the elevation, and I'm just gonna take that little bit of weight out there, and that's gonna help give a little bit of softness around the face. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. At this stage, we can go into hairline detailing. Um, with Georgia's hair, I kind of like the little PC-ness, the softness around the edges, so we're not going to do anything too severe. At this point, really, it's just going to be checking for any extra flips that we maybe we don't want. Just to create a little bit of separation between some of the curls, I'm just gonna do a little bit of light slide cutting.
This will create a little bit of air and separation and allow the flips and the curls to stand on their own. When doing these gentle mini slide cuts, I want to keep in mind that I don't want to cut the length off and I don't want to go against any of the natural curl patterns. So really I'm looking for the inside of the curl or inside of the C shape and just kind of relieving a little bit of that weight from the middle. Just taking little mini slivers so that you can get a little separation, a little more definition, a little more definition in each curl. So here's our final look, a sweet short shape with a tomboyish edge, has a nice flow around the head here. Everything's just really soft. Turn this way. And as you can see with our graduation, there's our buildup of weight that carries all the way through to the back. Keeping our natural edge, everything just loose, easy, fun.